just a moment, WBTV is having a party to celebrate their 30th anniversary. WBTV, you're looking good and getting better every day. 30 years. Keep it going for 30 more, WBTV. Congratulations. You know, I used to come to work in this building 30 years ago. It was called the Wilder Building then, and it's where WBTV was born in July of 1949. Let me give you a little bit of history. WBT Radio was located here when the Jefferson Standard Life Insurance Company purchased it from CBS. Charles H. Crutchfield became our general manager, and he, along with Joseph M. Bryan, the president of the Jefferson Standard Life Insurance Company, decided to invest in this new medium called television. And thus, WBTV was born, and thus it has lived for 30 years. We thought we'd have a little anniversary party on this 30th anniversary, and so we've invited some folks, and uh, we'd like you to join us too. So, tell you what let's do. Let's plan to go inside and start our party, and we'll be back with you in, uh, well, let's say just about a minute. Join us. This is WBTV, Channel 3, Charlotte, North Carolina, signing on television for the first time in the two Carolinas. WBTV started 30 years ago. Join us for a birthday party and a nostalgic look at 30 years of television. Looking good and getting better every day. Well, I know it's kind of crowded in here and a little bit noisy, but we really especially wanted you to join us in celebration of our 30th anniversary. You, along with many of our fine clients through the years and members of our station staff who've been with us for a long time, so, uh, that's why we've invited you to our party, and for the next hour, we're going to take our scrapbook, and we're going to kind of reminisce. We're going to meet some old friends over here, so let's see if we can get to them right now. But it's now, Jefferson. Well, here's uh, Jim Patterson and Doug Mays. Hi, Clyde. Look at little pictures, huh? Clyde, we have brought along here a scrapbook because yeah we brought the scrapbook because we weren't sure that your memory was as sharp as it used oh, to be i remember ukulele ike and the eddie canter show danny mcneil paradise island remember that one? Oh yeah that was great <laughs> and hey lynn do you remember my little margie Charles Farrell and Gail Storm. No. That's about 1950, 51. Oh, well, that explains it. I wasn't born then. Well, honey, you missed a large part of your education. That's right. Give me that task. Give it to us. <laughs> What's going on here? I'm Masterson of the FBI. Your daughter has just done a great service to her country, sir. My little Margie? Honey, what's the matter? It's all over. What's wrong? Where's the capsule, Margie? I swallowed it. No. I can't disclose the details, sir, but your daughter has just swallowed a sample of the world's highest explosive. What? Baby! Oh, don't touch me. I might go off. Quick, Mr. Walker, get some pillows. Don't move. Jim, they tell me you signed WBTV on the air. That's right, it was 30 years ago, and right here is a picture of that auspicious occasion. But that's a test pattern. I know, it. that's what we had from 12 to 7 <laughs> each day. <laughs> test pattern and tone to tune your television set. Amazing. <laughs> then he had the, the, the camera and the, 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 the time and the news, remember that, Doug? Yeah, yeah. sure do. Called the multiscope. <laughs> and we had the bullet watch in one corner, we had the weather in yeah. the other, and then the news crawled on the bottom. Good afternoon. This is Jim Patterson welcoming you to Channel 3 Television from WBTV, Charlotte, North Carolina. Television station of the Jefferson Standard Broadcasting Company. And that's, that's Boston Black. It sure hey, is. now listen, Boston Black, I used to cry to be able to stay up and watch that. Oh, you really? cried to watch <laughs> Boston Black? Hey, well, I was only four years old when it was on. That's oh. what I'm talking about. But <laughs> I remember that show very well because, um, you remember the opening of it, the shadow used to crawl across yeah. the screen on Boston yeah. Black? <laughs> Excitement, adventure, Boston Blackie. Enemy 
of those who make him an enemy. Friend of those who have no friends. Yes, sir. That's Boston Blackie, and he's quite a guy. Oh, so that's Boston Blackie. Well, I guess that was before I was born, too. <laughs> and here's a picture of a family watching television, and I would say this was about 1950 from the looks of the TV set. Yeah. Here's adventure. Dad, can I use the car Saturday night? Huh? Here's romance. Here's O'Henry's famous Robin Hood of the Old West, yeah, a disco kid. We'll talk about it later, huh? Oh, we want to watch Cisco Kid. Robert, did you hear that uh, President Truman fired MacArthur today? Oh, yeah, yeah, and I don't blame him a bit. You know, that General McCarthy was getting entirely too big for his gold braid. Yes, but sometimes President Truman speaks before he thinks. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a feisty little guy, let me tell you. <laughs> Could I use the car Saturday night? You can do that. What would your wife say? Your wife? You got any idea what the price of gasoline is nowadays? I'm going to tell you. Gasoline costs 21 cents a gallon today. I said we'd talk about it. Oh, that Cisco, he's wonderful. Yeah. Why did you have to say a thing like this to her about me? Well, he's here because she had a wedding in her eye. Oh, Pancho. Oh, Cisco. And you know the family that watched television stayed together. Gather around in a darkened room to watch that little rectangle, black and white. And it really changed their way of life. It brought in, for instance, uh, TV dinners. And instead of having folks over to play bridge or canasta, they'd come over to, to watch the Goldbergs or the Ken Murray show. You know what else, back during those days, nobody would ever uh, admit to the fact that you didn't watch television. You used to go to school, and the conversations used to always start with, uh, hey, did you see last night? And then you'd talk about a show, and you always claimed you saw it, whether you really did or not. Another thing I remember about those early days, too, is that uh, I used to get a lot more colds back then when we first got a television set in our house. You know, be able to stay home from school and uh, watch the tube. And then uh, my mother caught on to that after a while. You know, after a while, she would um, see the connection between television and my ill health. And so she set a rule down that whenever I had to be home from school six, she would not cut on the television set until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then my health would suddenly yeah. improve. Three yeah. Mike, I remember one time I put black shoe polish all over my cousin's white Pat Boone shoes. My mother was so mad at me that she wouldn't let me watch Howdy Doody for a week. Mm. Pretty cruel punishment. Well, I yeah. thought so. <laughs> Doody, 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 ho, ho, ho. I want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm really making a sacrifice, and I'm, I'm doing it for howdy doody and for the flub it up. Oh, good, Mr. Smith. Well, now, now, come on, Clarabelle. You, you, you show what the trick is, and, and you laugh, Mr. Buster, okay? Well, well come uh, on, Clarabelle. Uh, all depends. Now, if you laugh, you got to count this as 500 marbles, Mr. Buster. Now, if I think it's funny. All right. Now, what do I have to do, Clarabelle? What is this? Clarabelle. Make me laugh. What is this going to be? Over a little more. Is this going to hurt? Clarabelle looks like he's getting dizzy. What kind of a trick is this? Not very good, huh? Am I right? How's this? What? Hands up? Okay. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hit him with a bat? Hey, don't hit him! Don't what hit him! What are you going to do? Oh, no, no, no. Remember Eve Arden uh, as our Miss Brooks? Yeah. And, and look at Richard Crennan. He was just a young boy then. <laughs> My goodness, now he's playing very mature men on TV. Morning, Walter. We're fresh out of eggs, so I brought you some dry cereal. And you'll find milk in the pitcher here. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Davis, but I'd rather have my cereal straight. 
I can't stand the racket it makes. <laughs> Maybe the cat would like that milk, Mrs. Davis. Where is Minerva this morning? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Connie. I took her to the cat hospital about an hour ago. The poor thing was coughing and meowing something fierce. Oh, I didn't know she was ill. It's nothing serious. She'll be back in a few days. What was she coughing about? She swallowed the key to your wardrobe closet. <laughs> Davis, I've got to get to school and all my clothes are in that closet. I'll have a locksmith over a little later. Meanwhile, you can wear one of my dresses to school. <laughs> that should look cute. Better than you hey, Lynn Bradley. Hey, I, Todd. I think it's on at 8 o'clock at night. Are you sure you want to make that? I don't. Hey, if that all there's Lucy. Yeah, oh, I always about. wanted to be like her when I was a little girl. All those yeah. wonderful well, shows. Well, I think WBT viewers will agree that in that first decade, the most popular show was I Love Lucy. It was a kind of a spoof on married life with uh, Blue Seal Ball and her Cuban band leader husband, Desi Arnaz. Now, in 1952, in the first six months, Lucy became so popular that she displaced Arthur Godfrey and Milton Berle in the ratings. And in January of 1953, Lucy had a bigger audience than President Eisenhower did for his inaugural address. I want you to take me for a ride. All right. On my tricycle. Now, wait a minute. I've on got... my tricycle! On my tricycle! Oh! <laughs> Lucy, you're going to have to take me for a ride. Please! Now, I know this building was most recently used as a bank building, right. but where were the studios located? Not studios, studio. And it was located it over in that direction. And remember, it was about the size of an average size living room. That's about right, maybe with a broom closet thrown in. We didn't have a lot of space. And, oh, that's wait, true. and you did live television? Oh. Yes, yes, almost every day. Yeah, well, well first of all, I remember we did film and kinescope and uh, had the old Snader films. Remember Kirk Webster's Night Watch? Yes, but then we did live shows and there was a uh, a group on, uh, here's a picture of them, called the Nocturnes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right, great. from the studio. Yeah. And uh, I was the SO reporter. That's for sure. And remember the young man who became the weatherman named Clyde McClay? Who soon became cloudy yeah. because he forecast fair weather and somebody wrote him and said he just shoveled six inches of partly cloudy off of his side. <laughs> <laughs> and Susie McIntyre came along and cooked a good meal for us so we could recover. Remember that? Oh, yeah, with the, her cooking show. And Jim, you did the first commercial on local television. Yeah, first local live. Oh, you know, television today and television for the past 30 years really wouldn't exist without our fine sponsors, the people who, who make it possible. And we'd like for you to take a look at a list of those long-standing sponsors. Some of the early network newscasters were Douglas Edwards with the news and Edward R. Murrow, who later produced a series called Person to Person. And once during the course of that series of programs, the show originated here in Charlotte, and WBTV helped in the production of the network show when Edward R. Murrow came to interview one of our more famous citizens of that time, Harry Golden. Harry Golden makes his home and his office in this nine-room frame house on Elizabeth Avenue in Charlotte. Evening, Harry. 
Good evening, Ed. Nice to see you. Thank you. Are, are you sampling some of that balmy North Carolina weather? Well, it hasn't been balmy tonight. We've had a little rain, but uh, it stopped the minute we got on the air. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, someone has written, I've forgotten just who, Harry Golden sits on a high tower and watches the world revolve. Are you watching? Yes, I'm watching, Ed. You know, a philosopher once said, uh, you do not have to leave your room to see the world, and I watch it from here. And you know, years later, we produced a series of programs with Harry Golden. Unfortunately, it never aired. We called it The Golden Touch. It happened some time ago, I was having lunch with a friend. He gave his order, I gave my order. When the order came back, I had lima beans there on the plate instead of string beans. But I began to eat. My friend looked at me quizzically, and he said, uh, you didn't order lima beans, did you? I said, no, and I continued eating. And he looked at me. Am I too shy, he thought? Am I afraid? Am I too timid to open my mouth and call a waitress over? I knew what was going through his mind, so I put my knife and fork down. I said, I'll tell you the whole story. The other day, we sent a man to the moon. He photographed the moon within miles of it. So, I thought of that the moon. I also thought that in our galaxy there are four billion suns, mind you, not planets. The Earth is only a planet. Suns, four billion. Each sun has planets, plenty of planets around it. You can't even imagine such a thing. Four billion suns. In addition to that, there are billions of galaxies where this whole thing begins all over again. And when you think of all of that, what difference does it make whether it's lima beans or string beans? Well, in spite of uh, a very healthy acceptance by the people, the TV in those early days evoked a lot of condemnation. The criticism, in many ways, came from veteran performers who seemed to have trouble making the transition from radio to television. They called it the light that failed. Well, Jim and Doug and I were pretty young in those days, and we didn't realize that we were working for an industry that was probably going to fail in a year or two. People and critics said that uh, families would tire of watching that plywood box every night. But they didn't. They watched. And people, veteran performers who helped to make that transition to television were people like Burns and Allen. And they lasted and lasted. Gracie? Yeah. Gracie? Yeah? I've uh, got some bad news. Your guests are going to be terribly disappointed. Dr. Giroux just walked out. Oh, they won't be disappointed. They won't be here. I forgot to mail their invitation. <laughs> what are we doing now? Well, let's have dinner. Uh, come on! I guess we might as well eat. Come on, everybody. Dinner. Come on. Come on. You just sit here, Blanche. What are we going to do? Eat? Uh -huh. Well, all the people. None of the guests showed up. Well, at least we've got oh. some good food. So we'll, um... <laughs> Harry, you mean that... Why, well, uh, I guess maybe I was hungrier than I thought. <laughs> well, we'll have the party just the same. I'm music! Well, it was about this Hey, time. looking at old pictures and reminiscing, <laughs> huh? That's uh, CJ, we're just looking at some of the pictures and how, how in 30 years at WBTV, some of us have changed a little bit. <laughs> Not all that, a little bit. How uh, long was WBTV here in the Wilder Building? Well, WBT Radio was here for 26 years. <laughs> yeah, but now we, let's see. Now, WBTV was here from 1949 until 1955, yeah, right? That's correct. March of 1955. Yeah. Well, we just simply outgrew this place, you know. We had got as more scenery was added and more personnel added. You remember? Arthur Smith and the Cracker Jacks were using a little <laughs> closet for a dressing room. That's right. Now, in 1955, uh, we moved to a new building. Yeah. Oh, I was fulfilled with Hill, out there yeah. off West Moorhead Street. And we had more space than we knew what to do with. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, here's a, CJ, a picture of a family watching television. Now, you see how the size of the tube had changed. This was probably 1958. 
They're coming here, all right. Uh, hey, Dad. What'll I yeah. do? Nobody important. Do you mind if I borrow the car tomorrow night? The camp show got lost and came here by mistake. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I do not mind if you borrow the car tomorrow night. If you'll take it and drive yourself someplace where you can buy a dress. I can't get used to you girls wearing those blue jeans. Oh, what's wrong with jeans? <laughs> I don't know. Somehow they make you look like farmers or something. They all want to look like beatniks. That's the latest thing, you know, to be a beatnik. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write to that President Eisenhower and I'm going to say, Dear President Eisenhower, what is wrong with this country? Well, while you're at it, I wish you'd ask him why postage stamps are going up to four cents. Yeah, yeah, you know, I heard Douglas Edwards talking about that on the news. <laughs> Did you hear? They're going to put a monkey in a spaceship. At Cape Canaveral. Oh, jeez. Putting a monkey up in space. What a waste of time and money. They're never going to get a man up to the moon. <laughs> hey, there are two of the guys from the Smith Show. Don yeah. Reno and Brother Ralph. Yeah, yeah. cousin <laughs> You know, in those days, everything was live. And if we made a mistake, we made a mistake. You know, we didn't have videotape. Like I remember that. And I remember one time when I was caught on camera and I didn't know which camera to play to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we made a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes in those days. And a few of them we had to happen to capture on film. I remember uh, we had a funny thing that happened during a show called The Newcomers. It was a musical show that featured high school students. I want to thank the uh, Newcomers Chorus. They did their usual spectacular job. Definitely. Uh, these youngsters never cease to amaze me and uh, the professional qualities they uh, display. You're right. And the wonderful orchestra. Yes. Louis McGlord and his six knuckle crunches, <laughs> I think he calls them. <laughs> they did a wonderful job. Sure did. Lunas, can I do my act now? <laughs> gave you the, the opportunity to be able to do it again, the second time. And the third. And the fourth. And the fifth. <laughs> and then there was take 17. Yeah, that's, that's Charles Crutchfield. He was yeah. president of our company for 44 years. You remember, Jim, when we first joined network programming, Mr. Crutchfield, a group of dignitaries, were gathered in our control. And then somebody forgot to push a button and left him on the camera. And they were just standing there. It oh, yeah. seemed like an eternity that they were standing there. Oh, yeah. Leg on there. Yeah, that was too much. <laughs> sure does bring back a lot of memories. There's Andy Griffith. There. You know, I remember when Andy came to see Mr. Crutchfield about a job at WBTV, and I remember Crutch said to him, well, Andy, you just don't have it for TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Crutchfield wasn't always wrong. As a matter of fact, he was usually right about hiring. He hired me. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, WBTV has been responsible for uh, launching a lot of people's careers. Remember Nelson Bett? Sure. Charles Carroll? And Ty, you remember this young man. Yeah. Don't you? That's Browning oh, Bryan. Yeah. 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 Found him down in Easley, South Carolina. What an incredible young man. But he never thought he'd be a radio and television and recording <laughs> star. He was on the network a lot of times. Lots of times on Godfrey and on the Kraft Music Hall. I remember the first time he was on a station. Board. Browning Bryant is his name. And how old are you, Browning? I'm 11, Mr. Boyd. Yeah. You just turned 11, haven't you? Yes, sir. I yeah. had a birthday the 24th of January. Did you? Well, yeah, yes, you've sir. changed since I saw you last. Browning, how long have you been singing? 
Well, Mr. Boyd, I've been trying to sing for about three years now. Have you? Yeah. Well, you tried pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Ty, when did you come to work? Oh, 1961, Klein. I grew up watching you guys. You were all terrific and my idols. I wanted to be like all of you. And I'm still trying. <laughs> But I grew up in Statesville, listened to WBT Radio and Grady, and then the Shadow of the Tower and watched television. Remember shows like the Roy Rogers Show? Oh, yeah, it was a good show. Millionaire, remember that? Yeah. The Roy Rogers Show, starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, his comical sidekick. From these tracks, I'd say that Fred Kane met up with three riders here. Probably the rest of the Egger gang. Well, let's get after them. I'm ready to roll. If you're going to go with us, you better leave this thing here because we're heading into the hills. She ain't no thing. Besides that, Nellie Bell can go any place you can go. You ought to know that. Sir? I'd like a few words. Rare or medium? My words are very rare. It's a business matter, Miss Leonard. You know my name. <laughs> no, Eve, it's a lawsuit. I saw that customer deliberately put that piece of glass in his plate. No, no, nothing like that. This is of great importance to you, an inheritance of a sort. if that's what you mean. And it's tax-free. One million certified dollars. We were talking about people whose uh, careers have been launched here at WBTV. Yes, we were. Yeah. Fortunately, some whose careers have been launched here have stayed around and won the hearts of millions of Carolinians all over. Absolutely. And one of those is our own Fred Kirby. And what can you say about Fred Kirby? Yeah. Well, what can you say about Fred? He's one of the greatest. And more than that, he has been a part of the WBTV family. Since the My beginning. gosh, he's raised everybody here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All the kids in the world. And it all began with Junior Rancho. Yes, sir, Reeve Parkins. Look out. Look out. Look out. <laughs> for 30 years on Channel 3 television, and these guns are loaded with love. All right. Ah, That's yeah. pretty nice. <laughs> Fred, do you remember the titles of some of the shows you've done over the years? Oh, we've had we've had loads of them. Well, we started off with Junior Rancho, of course. One Kirby's of the first, Corral. Yes, yeah, Kirby's was Corral. Five o'clock. Five o'clock fun. Three Ring Circus. Three yeah. Ring Circus. Yeah. That was a clown. good one. Sure. Yes, yes. That one? And what about the Little Rascals? <laughs> oh, yes, the Little Rascals. Yeah, and what about the show with Clara Lowry? Oh, Whistle, Whistle Stop. stop. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, she is. Did you ring? I heard somebody call my name. Hello, Hi, teacher. Fred. <laughs> Fred, I've got to tell you this now that I have you here. I have watched you all my life, and I never thought I'd get a chance to work with you and Jim on a children's show, Whistle Stop, and I really enjoy it. Wonderful, and I'll tell you this much. I promise that I'm going to try and do it for another 30 years. Here all right. <laughs> In our family here at WBTV, we are very proud of members of our family who have become a part of the very fiber of our community. Some of them are no longer with us. I guess Alan Newcomb was the most beloved man that I ever met. We'll always remember him. We miss him. We always will. And more painfully for many of us, two other members of our family who could not be with us tonight, who passed away just recently, Betty Feaser. And Pat Lee. Although they are no longer here, we will always remember them. They had so much influence on us at WBTV, they were great members of our family. They will continue to exert that influence on us as we remember them. Clyde, I just heard you talking about some of the marvelous people who 
who have made WBTV what it is. I'll never forget when I first was introduced to a number of the members of this staff, and you were one of them. I was, <laughs> I was here in town for an audition, and uh, they brought me into a room with about 12 or 13 of you folks and uh, introduced you one at a time, just right behind then Somebody, I think it was Patterson, for a joke says, now, name them off again. And of course, I'd grown up watching you folks, if you'll forgive me. I was able to name every member of the staff, and of course that included Phil Agrest and Gil Stamper and uh, Fletcher Austin and Bob Rayford and you and well, all the rest of them. And one guy that I've known and grown to love an awful lot, and that's Jim Patterson. <laughs> hey, Dick, Dick Taylor, would you come here just a minute, please? How long have you been with the guy? <laughs> well, since 1954, the first time, uh, yeah. and I was really grew up watching most of you folks, you know, particularly you, I remember as a small child, and of course, Lynn was not even born then. Not very but one of the most impressive things to me when I first got here was the operation of the news department. I remember you there, and uh, as a matter of fact, some of the other folks, Nelson Benton, who still looks awfully young. Yeah, he was the one that was instrumental, you know, in getting the WBTV news off the ground. Right. Today, 30 years later, the news department has grown until there are now 43 people in WBTV News who work to produce more than 12 hours of television news every week. Do you remember some of the faces who used to bring us WBTV News? Bob Inman, Bob Quincy, Mike Coza, Ron DePaulis, Bob Zirkin, Paul Jones, Susie Corden, Gail Harris, Al Dale, Mike Gray, John Loddick, Ben Waters, Mike Piller, Doug Mays, Dietta Barnhart, John Jameson, John Blunt, Bill Ballard, who along with the CBS newscasters have brought chapters of history right into your living room. The flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. The death of a president. Man's landing on the moon. And the American Bicentennial. and a comprehensive reporting of the news in our community. North Carolina's battle with HEW Secretary Califano is over. Califano is out. Construction delays may mean problems generating enough power in North Carolina. And on the weather scene, still uh, pretty cloudy and showery through the area. Not quite as warm, though, thank goodness. And it was not quite so warm in the British Open today, but Hale Irwin was as he takes over the lead, going for the double open victory. Those stories and more, tonight on WBTV News. Well, our party is just going great here. Our 30th anniversary party for WBTV. Folks are having a good time, I think. I'd like for you to kind of look around. Let's, uh, uh, to my immediate right, as our executive vice president, well, let's, we're starting over there. That's Hugh Ashcraft, and I believe that's Bob Heiss in our sports department. Uh, Mike Coza from News. And uh, Carlton Caruso, uh, Waldensian Bakeries, Sunbeam Bread, one of our great sponsors for many, many years. Uh, let's see if we can uh, catch some other folks in the area that uh, you might know. Uh, we're coming up, that's uh, Jimmy Crockett of Crockett Enterprises, uh, one of the great promotional firms. Knew Jim's father so well, what a great man who contributed so much to our city during recent years. He's passed on now, bless his soul. Uh, we also have Woody Player from uh, Queen City TV and Appliances, Janet Bowles, our co-anchor, uh, John Edgerton, our general manager, and Jim Babb, our executive vice president. Just some of the folks here for our 30th anniversary. Oh, and here's a picture of a family watching television. I believe that was about 1965. <laughs> Come sit down and watch the Lucy show. Yeah, I wish I could. I gotta go to that meeting. Uh, John. Hey, Johnny. Can I borrow your Honda? Huh? Yeah, sure, Dad. 
Oh, Dad, you can use the car. No, darling, I cannot use the car because I want you to use the car and I want you to go downtown and go somewhere where you can buy a dress long enough to cover those knees. Oh, boy, these mini skirts. Lady Bird Johnson was on TV wearing a short skirt. Well, that's great. Lady Bird Johnson wants to wear a short skirt. Let her wear a short skirt. But you don't look like no lady, Bird. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> oh, that Lucy's great, isn't she? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you missed the news. Uh -huh. Bob Brown says we're going to have a man on the moon by 1970. Yeah, well, I'll believe it when I see it. And if it happens, I hope the first thing they'll do is to take those rock and roll Beatles and send them up there and leave them up there. I was so desperate, I tried to catch him, but he was too fast for me. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, hello, hello Heckler. Heckler. It's fun to see that about the news department, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you gentlemen were... Uh, each a part of that at various and so times. Are you. Well, yeah, yeah, for a short you. period of time, a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, as I think back over the 30 years, I guess I think about the specials more than anything. Uh, so many wonderful entertainment shows that, that WBTV did over the years. Shows like Our Country Tis of Thee. Oh, yes. New York, New Hampshire, and New Jersey. Are you the pursuit of happiness? For life and liberty and freedom. The three of us. Home of Patrick Henry, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and James Monroe, both ships. Helen and Georgia, we agree, sir. North and South Carolina, so do we, sir. And that's how our country had its birthday, a day that everybody celebrates. When 13 original colonies became the several years ago called Marlena about the great singer Marlena Shaw. A man with some kind of ambition ain't got no time to hate. Why don't you just wipe away the evil? Let the good, let the good that you got shine through now, now, now. Hm. Let it shine through now. Would you excuse me a minute, sir? Here you've been hanging around Telling everybody you ain't got nowhere to go. Steady preaching, hate your brother. Now you really ought to know that a man is just a man. And we are all put here to learn. Why don't you give up, give up, give up, give up a little bit of love and you can get some in return. And then you can just wipe away the evil. And then one that I sure enjoyed because uh, I've really gotten to be a fan of bluegrass and country music. It's a show called uh, Good Old Mountain Music with Tommy Vail and C.J. Fill up my jug with that good old mountain dew. Fill up my jug with that good old mountain My Uncle Bill's got a steel on the hill where he runs on. A gallon or two. Oh, the buzzards in the sky get so drunk they can't fly from smelling that good old mountain dew. Oh, oh they call it that old mountain dew, dew, dew. And then they bring these hitter pew. Oh, I shut up my mug if you fill up my jug with that good old to 
Perhaps one of our proudest moments was a show called The Row String Quartet Plays on Your Imagination. That show won an Iris and a Gabriel and a Peabody Award all in the same year. Yes. This fella turned us in and the law threw the 38 special right in my face. He said, it mm. won't be long now. And I turned, I wheeled and turned, and when I did, I just naturally dead flood out running. And while he'd put the light on me, I'd fall on the ground and skeet on my belly. And when he'd, the light had come off of me, I'd come to my feet. And I'm the only man there is in this county that absolutely outrun Polly White. Days that's gone by, we'd laugh about that. And he said, I must be partly littered because I outrun him skeeting on my belly. Was that the closest call you had? That is the closest they ever got to get me tangled up in. <laughs> so uh, I got out of that easy, and that learned me. I decided, well, I believe we'll just let that alone, that I can live without fooling with whiskey in. But I've still, on through life, I have drank the drink of whiskey all my life. But I had, if I had any brains, I used brains enough to never would let it get ahead of me. Oh, look, there's Mary Stewart from Search for Tomorrow. And what would daytime television be without the soaps? And you know these people who say that, oh, I don't have time to watch the soaps. Yeah. They're the ones that can tell you that. Mary loves John, but John loves Susie. Yes. But Susie wants a divorce and is really oh, in love with music Bob. Play. And then there are all those others. <laughs> Romance and Helen stand here. Yeah. Oh, my darling. As our world spins and turns and turns, and we continue our search for tomorrow, we must always look for the guiding light. I see. Hmm. Well, what do you mean? You know what they say about all work and no play? <laughs> I was afraid it was against the rules. <laughs> uh -uh. Go ahead, then. Make a fool out of yourself. Oh, well, still, I don't think it's right. Oh, thank you. Oh, honestly. Just flunk first impressions, I think. <laughs> no kidding. Mm -hmm. Now that's funny. Not funny. Not meant to be funny, Jeff. Would it be too much of an imposition if I asked for another brandy? <sighs> Do that. See ya. Speaking of daytime television, mm -hmm. do you remember when we started Top of the Day? Yes, oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> that was Pat Lee's idea, yeah. and a great one it was, too. People in the industry said we were really biting off a hunk to chew there. Right. But, well, a happy and very nice day to you, Thursday, April 28, 1977. A full hour of very interesting things, including the man I think any warm-blooded American woman would want to talk to, and that's Burke Reynolds. We're going to be talking to Viv Harris, going to be talking to him, and we're going to be... Uh, um, Really getting into some things about liberation and women. And... Uh, have women made any inroads in television and films? And Burt Reynolds should know he's been in the industry for about 20 years, and we were lucky enough to get an interview with him. I just wanted to say, you're not going to get to be on a show with all these women by yourself, and that's why I'm here, mainly. Kind of balances out the, uh, yeah. the situation here. <laughs> and what's Burt Reynolds got that I haven't? Don't answer that. <laughs>
That would take an hour to explain, C.J., at least. Barbara Stutz, you are, you kind of knew not only to daytime television, but to television and to Top of the Day. That's right, but I was a fan of yours and of Top of the Day long before I was on. And I will never forget the first time I was on and how nervous I was. Oh, yeah, what, what you don't know, Barbara, is that uh, we saved a little bit of tape from that show. You were trying to, I think you were, you were making a cake or... Uh, let me oh. rephrase that. Let me say oh. you were trying to make a cake. Yes. I remember. I, I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we reflect on 30 years of television, it's kind of interesting to think about the trends. Back in the early days, it was situation comedies and quiz shows. Then came the spectaculars. Remember oh, Mary Martin flying through the air as Peter Pan? Oh, yeah. Uh, the Ford 50th anniversary show mm -hmm. back in 1953, I guess it was, when anybody who was anybody in show business uh, was there and appeared on that show. But uh, the industry really has uh, kept up and tried to be innovative in what it's doing. And uh, uh, remember All in the Family, the impact it had on, um, on us, on the industry, and uh, on family is in general. I guess Archie Bunker is a name that's going to be uh, going into the dictionary. Now let me tell you something. If your cousin Maud says one wrong way to me, we're going to be leaving before the bride takes the shower. <laughs> Daddy, her only daughter's getting married. Cousin Maud will be in a good mood. She'll probably welcome you with open arms. I don't care what she's got open as long as she's got a big mouth closed. <laughs> Well, Maud was thrilled when I told her we was coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you remember that phenomenal show called The Waltons and its pilot going home and how it became a great series? Oh, yes. Oh, boy, wasn't it something else? Well, here's how it all began. The Waltons. There were 11 of us in all, seven red-headed children, a mother, a father, and two grandparents. The Walton family had endured in that part of the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia for over 200 years. A short time in the memory of a mountain, still our roots had grown deep in its earth. John, boy, is the depression gonna last forever? Oh, Mr. Hoover says that prosperity is just around the corner. When I grow up, I want to marry a man rich enough to buy me dimes. And if a depression comes along, we'll just move away from it. When I grow up, I'm going to marry a rich man and have lots of babies. I'm not going to have any babies. What are you going to have, Elizabeth? Puppies! Flipping through the scrapbook, I guess, is a pretty good way of seeing what's happened in television and WBTV in 30 years' time. You'd see some faces that are very familiar to you and some that you've completely forgotten. Uh, we've talked about some shows that have really gone down into television history and have lasted and lasted. And you've seen some shows that maybe lasted only a week or a month or at most a year. All in all, these past 30 years have gone by uh, pretty fast. Well, let's take a three-minute look at these last 30 years.
as we said earlier in our program, I guess television today and during these past 30 years would not be possible without the fine sponsors who have provided the financial help to uh, give us our television that we have today. So with your permission, we would like to review some more of our very fine clients. it has been. I think our folks here are having a good time. Wallace J. Jorgensen, president of the Jefferson Pilot Broadcasting Company, which now comprises a lot more stations than WBT and WBTV, will we? Well, we are 13 divisions right now, and with the FCC approval of Miami, we will be 15. Isn't that great? 30 years have produced so many, many things. We think we're looking pretty good, but we think we're going to look even better. We've got some new things coming up. Indeed so. And with the help of Andy Shore, we're going to unveil why we're looking better every day. Okay, come this fall, there's going to be Andrew Shore is back behind us. Can you see as Andrew is going to open the big box and you'll see something that's going to be on this fall on WBTV. That <laughs> that's the birthday present. That's right? right. That's our birthday present to you. Come on, Andrew, let's go. I think you can see what it is. It is called PM Magazine. I'm Bob Lacey. Maybe a few of you know me already from WBT Radio. I'm on every morning from 6 until 10. And starting September 3rd, we'll get to know each other even better. So I join a brand new program that'll debut on WBTV Channel 3 called PM Magazine. This is a totally new concept in television programming. And to help me tell you about it, I'd like you to meet somebody new. Hi, I'm Laura Quinn. Now, no, you don't know me yet, but I feel as though I know you. For the past three years, I've been working behind the scenes at WBTV as a news photographer or a camera person, if you will. Eyes like an eagle, she has. I'm really excited about PM Magazine. As Bob said, it's a totally new concept in television programming. Right. To begin with, PM Magazine will be shot totally on location. You'll never see us in a studio. We'll take our cameras where the action is. We'll be in the streets or in a park like this. Maybe up to the mountains skiing or perhaps by the beach. Wherever things are happening. But there's much more to PM Magazine than just taking the cameras out of the studio. PM Magazine will be a locally produced program, but with a scope much wider than Charlotte, Metrolina, or even the Carolinas. reporters from Maine to Miami, from Seattle to San Diego. And like all magazines, we'll have regular departments that will give you tips on home and health or leisure. These will be seen on a regular basis. The departments will be really special. You might find out about a brand new movie that's coming to town, perhaps a record review, or maybe how to make a delicious quiche Lorraine all by yourself. We'll have interesting theater reviews and cooking tips will encourage consumers to buy quality food and products. 
The latest trends and gimmicks, making people aware of items that they can't live without. Oh, Bob, if we're going to be ready with five shows each week, we better get busy. Right. We could go on and on about PM Magazine, but what you ought to really do to find out about it is watch us. We'll be on every night, Monday through Friday, at 7.30, right after Walter Cronkite and the CBS News. But no, we're not another news show. That's right. We will be informative and have information you can use, but always in an entertaining way. Well put, Lacey. Information that's entertaining. She has a way with words, doesn't she? <laughs> idea as to what PM Magazine is going to be and why we are so excited. Our producer is going to be Andrew Shore. That's right, behind the scenes now, Clyde, but I'm really excited because you're going to see two wonderful smiling faces. You just saw them on tape, and here they are live. Maura Quinn and Bob Lacey, who you know, you'll hear them on the radio and you'll see them on TV. Okay, Maura, are you looking forward to it? I'm just looking forward to it so much, I can't wait to get on the air. Bless your heart. Bob, I know you are. I'm really up for it, Clyde. You're yeah, still it's going to be great. morning radio. Though. Yes, sir. Yeah. Long day, but I enjoy it. So that's a, a little idea of what we have in store for you. Much more will be coming your way on Channel 3 as we go into our next 30 years. Now, stay tuned for A Star is Born, the very first movie shown on WVTV 30 years ago. A Star is Born with Janet Gaynor and Frederick March. Portions of this program were pre-recorded for production reasons.